process. High performance cameras require sensitive detection to capture scenes in low light conditions. It is crazy, Smikes, and it seems like from the histone code, you can predict which animals are going to live longer. So just from the histones, there is information about longevity, which is really insanely cool, I think. So like naked mole rat hits, histones are fundamentally different than um, beaver histones. So he looked at all these. Actually, in whale, whale, blue whale sample that they had, and they looked at it. Well, folks, I have to call it a night. Family reunion tomorrow, and I have to get up early to assemble stuff and take with us. Have a great evening and Saturday. Thank you so much, Dakum. The spell is broken, and we live again. Dakum, sleep well. Thank you for being so amazing. Have fun at the family reunion tomorrow. Give them kisses, and please tell them that uh, science sends their love. I don't think they'll understand what that means, but we still want to send our love to the Dakum family because we, we love the Dakum family. I can't help it. I can't help it. I can't help it. Similarly, some mass spectrometers have the capability to confidently detect trace level analytes. Some scenes offer the challenges of bright and dim subjects in the same area. Some mass spectrometers can deliver a wide dynamic range and maintain measurement at the low end of the intensity scale. So here are the peaks again. Um, what's really important about this is that if you're only trying to identify if your sample has already known compounds in it, you don't need the very bottom one. You don't need the great resolution imaging, right? You, you can have the broad ones and you just need to see, okay, if your three most abundant things are in the sample, yes or no, you can get with the, the bigger, the, the more rough ranges versus if you're doing from scratch trying to identify all the compounds in this particular sample for the first time ever, then you need to do a much more fine, finer resolution. That's not necessarily more expensive machines. That's just, that it could be, but it's also time on the machine. NMD, NMD, ma'am, you sleep well? In dreams, you as well, one Dakum, is not both. tethered by earthly limitations. Thank y'all for hanging mean? out with us. Come. And thank you for the boost again, NMD, I appreciate you. When very large components are present, in digital photography, resolution is often measured in megapixels. As resolution is increased, sharper images can be captured. Similarly, some mass spectrometers can deliver sharp resolution for confident mass selectivity. Resolution is an important figure, but accuracy is equally important. You there, so, <laughs> Smikes, here's a very big catch on these machines. They are... There's a couple of different companies that makes them. And unfortunately, that means the software that analyzes your data is not standardized, nor is it very good. It's not like RNA sequencing, where with RNA sequencing, you have very, very state-of-the-art, regularly utilized protocols in place. With mass spectrometers, you don't have those. There's no good software. So most of the time, when you're every time you run a new kind of sample, you have to write new code to analyze that kind of sample. And Smikes, you wrote 100k, 100K for that machine. The, this higher end one, probably this Elysian one, you're, gonna, you're probably looking at a million, a cool million for it. Um, the biggest part of it is the service contract. It's a yearly $50,000 service contract for the high end mass spectrometers. And if you don't get it, uh, things tend to break pretty quickly. And it is a huge, it adds up really, really fast without a service contract. You want images that are true to life, much like you want your mass spectral measurement to be accurate in both mass and isotopic pattern. Just like in photography, you need to be able to capture fast moving subjects with adequate speed. In chromatography, that means acquisition rates that can adequately sample across a chromatographic peak, whether the separation is performed on UHPLC, SFC, GC, or even 2DLC. All those acronyms the GC was gas chromatography. That's the smells or like the, we were talking about the, um, like a smile said, the cosmetics, that's what the G GC would be. And the LC would be liquid, liquid uh, spectrometer. So those are the two uh, primary components and they're not cross compatible. So you can't ask, if you want to ask questions about certain odorants, you will need to do the gas spectrometry versus the LC. Anything about that? Those are floating around. For the, the smells, or the, which, which parts, Mike's? 
When all these things come together for a photographer, a vivid instant... All of it. Yeah, I... Well, because, like, the service contract for a sequencing machine, that's much less um, than... Oh, the, comp the compounds and the order. Yeah. So, actually, that's one uh, experiment that I've done on two master mics is you take... You can extract odorants in hexane. So you can put an ant into hexane. And all the smells that are on its body will be washed off and float into the hexane. You, the ant usually has expired from this, but there are ways to gently do it where the ant doesn't have to expire. You can take like a little Q-tip with hexane and paint it off the ant if you really want to. And then your liquid hexane now has all the odorants that are outside of the ant. And then you put it into the machine and then you get a list with those peaks of what the composition is of the smell of that ant, which is pretty remarkable. Um, we did that for leaf cutter ants and found there had been one paper that had looked at that before, but not very at, not a high resolution. So not like these where we're talking about, but at the low level resolution. And so they picked out the most prevalent smells. We found those, but then we also found a ton more because we did it at a much like higher resolution, which is really, really cool. You can get that kind of shift in data. In life can be captured with high fidelity. Imagine what your lab could do if a mass spec could deliver all of those performance attributes in the same measurement and you have the software to... Oh, a gold bat. I need a gold bat too. Thank you, Claire. Harness such an incredible measurement. The Agilent 6546 LCQ Top. Accelerating capabilities. Contact your local Agilent representative to learn more. In an alternate universe, ants gently swapped out humans analyze our orderance. I mean, with the multiverse theory, right? There has to be one like that. Um, so, Mike, did I, Chad, did I answer your question on how the mass spectrometer is like roughly the, what the idea of it is? We can go, like, if y'all want, we can look into. Oh, here we go. This one. Here is the actual sample being shot into the machine. This is a hybrid instrument. This instrument is what more I'm familiar with. So this little box, there's, this isn't the whole machine. Hi, Seth Lily, how are you doing? Feels like I've caught you, I've not caught you live for weeks. I'm sure no science has happened since, absolutely not. Absolutely not, Seth Lily. Why would that be? Welcome in, how are you doing tonight? I hope you're doing well. Talking about some brand new kind of honey that was identified. They did mass spectrometry on the honey to identify all the compounds within the honey and see what makes it so amazing. It's a particular New Zealand honey um, that is quite amazing. And we're trying to figure out why that is. Um, so they put it into a mass spectrometer. So this machine spikes in chat. Um, there's actually a second giant component attached to it. So it's not just these two. So these are maybe my upper body height in size and then there's a second unit that's standalone separate from this that all hooks together yours the sample will eventually be shot through here and there's a this video i think has a really cool showing of what that looks like mass spectrometer from thermo fisher scientific it's called q exactive plus this is showing the schematic of the design of the instrument so this spray here this is the super gnarly part that's where your sample is coming through after it's been shot. It gets really, really heated up. And this electron, like, it sprays out your sample. And this part is magnetized. And that magnetization allows the sample then to be zipped into the machine and then analyzed. Uh, they run that on potential probable lanternfly excrement honey. So I don't, we haven't looked at the lanternflies. Um, but we did do uh so this is just for straight honey for the, from new zealand but not lanternflies but we are going to do a, a deep dive on a spotted lanternfly soon i actually caught a nymph today and preserved it um, they're a very invasive species that kill trees um you guys spikes might actually be already seeing these out and about i think they've made their way out to chicago now um and they're like we have signs that says like kill on site kind of thing for these bugs because they kill trees left and right it's really really terrifying um but yeah this is it's gonna show you guys front and source all the tubes inside the machine flatopole for ion cleaning cleaning up the ions quadruple mass filter for ion selection with an hcd collision cell and an orbi trap in the they don't have the metals in them they're ma they become magnetized with the electricity spikes 
so it gets pulled in because of the electric current. Um, again, rudimentarily is how I understand it.